Hi everyone, so we've learned lots of ways of analyzing arguments and uh, hopefully you've picked up some skills that allow you to do this a little easier now. For the assignments moving forward in our class, we'll be taking a look at philosophical arguments. And what I want to summarize here is how to go about analyzing uh, these sorts of things. So let's summarize. You know, when critiquing an argument, Obviously, the first thing you should do is understand the argument that you're critiquing. It is really unfair to start judging an argument or start um, uh, being combative with somebody without understanding first what it is they're trying to tell us and what their thought process is, their logic that draws them towards a certain conclusion. So when critiquing an argument for class, the first thing I'd like you to do is state the issue that's in question and the conclusion you are disagreeing with. What is the main point the, the speaker is trying to say and, and, and make it clear so that everybody's on the same page about what the argument's really about? And hopefully throughout the term, you've realized this is really important because when listening to somebody, when reading something, you know, people don't formally always give us a argument clearly. So in order for the discussion to go anywhere it'd be useful if everybody was clear on what the argument is that's in question now in terms of critiquing the argument what i'd like you to do is explain why it is that you are disagreeing with this person's conclusion and we've looked at various ways in which to do this take a look at their argument what type of argument are they presenting to you is it an inductive one or deductive if it's deductive you have some tools that you could use to show that the argument is not valid, right? That the conclusion does not necessarily come from the premises. So if somebody says, no, this is for sure true, you can take a look at the argument using some of your uh, Venn diagram skills or if it's a syllogism, some, sort of, some of your rules and go and test the argument and say, oh, look, based upon the premises you provided, it is not guaranteed that that conclusion is true, right? If it's an inductive argument, you identify the type of inductive argument. Is it an inductive syllogism? Is it an inductive generalization? Is it an uh, inductive analogy? And then you have those various ways of judging how strong or weak the argument is. And then clearly explain yourself. Why do you think it's not as strong as it could be? Or why do you think it's weak? Um, take a look at the wording, the language. Is something unclear about it? Is there something incorrect about a premise that's provided to you is a premise that's provided seemingly unbelievable based upon how you know the world to be based upon your personal experience and then you'd write about it right you'd explain why you have an issue with certain premises given within the argument be aware of the use of fallacies if somebody's giving you an argument do you see how what they're saying and how they're saying it is really reliant on a fallacy we've learned in class. And maybe there really isn't an argument there after all. And lastly, if you are able to, maybe you don't agree with the conclusion the author is presenting, the speaker is presenting, um, and you have, a, you have the belief that the opposite is true, well then you can provide a counter argument. You can provide an argument that supports the point. Either uh, all of these are ways in which you can critique an argument. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Uh, we'll watch a few clips of water bottle commercials, and I'd like you to describe what the issue is, what the conclusion is that the commercial is wanting us to believe, uh, and what their argument is to try to persuade us to believe it. Okay, and then we can talk about how to critique these arguments. Let's take a look at the first one. Drink, drink, 
because the more water you drink, the better you feel. So make your body happy. Drink more water. Drink, drink, drink. So what's the issue in the video? Well, the issue is whether or not we should drink more Aquafina water. And obviously the commercial, being it's from Aquafina, wants us to conclude that, yes, you should drink more Aquafina water. Okay, now what's the argument? Okay, this is one way of looking at how the argument is structured. Uh, there's a premise that says the more Aquafina you drink, the happier your body feels. There seems to be an unstated premise that says all drinks that make your body feel feel happier are liquids you should drink more of, with the conclusion then being you should drink more Aquafina. Okay. So take a look. What type of argument is it? Well, based upon how I stated the unstated premise, it maybe it comes across as a deductive argument, and you could rephrase these claims and put them into categorical syllogism form and do your analysis to show, wait a minute, this logic doesn't make sense. Or if you like, you can provide a counter example to this argument showing why the logic doesn't make sense. You can take a look at the premises and see if there's any issues, questions you might have about the premises. Maybe you don't believe one or two of these. The more aquafina you drink, the happier your body feels. Do you have an issue with that? Is that necessarily true? Well, you know what? There are some problems with drinking too much water, right? You can get into some physical ailments as a result of drinking too much water. So maybe you can question the first one. The second premise, all drinks that make your body happier are liquids you should drink more of. Is that necessarily true? Well, there's a vagueness to here, right? To this, to this statement. What does it mean to make the body happier? Right? What is exactly does that refer to? Because some people can interpret this as, you know, I, my body feels happy when I drink alcohol. <laughs> my body feels happy when I drink lots of soda. Is that necessarily a drink I should drink more of? Yeah. And then you could present this as a, you know, ways or reasons on why you um, don't necessarily agree with the argument that's presented. Let's take a look at another commercial. Now drink up, you're losing a lot of water out there. Coach, if we're losing water, why don't we just drink water? One day, it will hit you. Nothing hydrates quite like water, with no artificial colors, no calories, no sugar. Nestle Pure Life. Choose the crisp, clean taste of America's number one bottled water. Nestle Pure Life. Embrace the pure life. Okay, so what's the issue here? Well, the issue, again, is whether or not we should drink more, and this time it's Nestle Pure Life water, and obviously the conclusion the Nestle Pure Life folks want us to draw is that, yeah, you should drink more of our water, okay? So what's the argument? It seems like there's a couple arguments or, you know, a combination of a couple. Uh, one way to phrase an argument here would be to say, nothing hydrates like Nestle Pure Life. And there seems to be an unstated premise that says you should drink liquids that hydrate you best, right? Therefore, you should drink more Nestle Pure Life. Again, See, uh, notice that it's a, a syllogism, at least the way I structured the argument, it's a syllogism. Uh, you can rewrite this in terms or as a categorical syllogism and use our Venn diagrams or our rules method to analyze you know, the validity of the argument. Uh, you can also take a look at each premise and see if you, have a, if you have any issues with the premises. So the first premise, nothing hydrates like Nestle Pure Life. Was well, that necessarily true? Are there other things you could drink? like other, other brands of bottled water or just like tap water? Could those hydrate as well? Um, does Nestle Pure Life really hydrate better than uh, liquids with electrolytes in them? Um, so maybe the first premise isn't true. The second premise, you should drink liquids that hydrate you best. Well, that's kind of unclear. Should we drink them all the time? Is that all we should drink? Uh, how often should we drink them? Right? It's not very clear what they refer to here because there are drinks that uh, hydrate you, uh, things like Gatorade and you know other drinks with um, electrolytes that you may not want to drink all the time because of the sugar content. As we mentioned a second ago, even water, you can drink too much water and get ill from it. Um, so premise two seems to be in question, uh, which means there's an issue with the argument as a whole. Right? Another argument you can see presented 
which might be part of a larger argument here within the commercial is the following. Nestle Pure Life tastes good. There seems to be then an unstated premise that says you should drink liquids that taste good. Therefore, you should drink more Nestle Pure Life. Again, you could probably see some issues here. There's an issue of clarity. What do you mean by taste good? That's very subjective. Well, what might taste good right now might not taste good later. So does that mean what we should drink changes depending on uh, our palate, depending on what we ate? Because what we eat changes maybe what tastes good to us, right? Uh, again, we take a look at the premises, we can, or we can take a look at the structure of the argument and see, uh, well, if it's a deductive argument, then uh, we can turn this into categorical syllogism and use our Venn diagrams or the rules method to determine you know, the validity of the argument. If you want to phrase this as an inductive argument, you know, what type of inductive argument is it? Uh, is it a syllogism or a um, generalization? Um, here, hopefully, you can see that it goes from something specific to something general. So it seems like a generalization. And then you could apply uh, what we talked about before uh, in terms of develop, in terms of judging strength of an argument to, to this one. We can take a look at the premises and see if there's any questions with the premises. So the first one, Nestle Pure Life tastes good. Do you necessarily agree with that? You know, if you're a person that doesn't like water, then you might not agree with this and you'll, the argument would not uh, be very strong, right? It may not be valid. Take a look at the second premise. You should drink liquids that taste good. Again, there are lots of liquids that you might find tasty that you may not want to drink all the time. Alcohol and sodas and even juices can be problematic. You drink a lot of juices with lots of sugar, then you know, it can lead to things like diabetes. So this is the approach I'd like you to take when you are critiquing and analyzing arguments. What is the conclusion that the speaker wants you to draw? How do they get there? What are the reasons they provide? Are they giving you a deductive argument? Uh, you get the sort of that argument, validity of that argument using all the skills we've developed so far in class. Take a look at the premises. Do you agree or disagree with any of the premises? Do they seem unbelievable to you? Is there more evidence needed to convince you that a certain premise is true? Uh, is the argument, uh, is the speaker present, presenting an, a fallacy instead of an actual argument? Maybe you can point out the fallacy. Uh, is there a counter argument you could present? Is there a, an argument for the opposing view that you feel is a stronger argument? These are all various ways in which you can critique an argument. So as you look at the philosophical arguments for the uh, upcoming week, try to jot down these things as you read them. Well, what's the main point? What's their conclusion? How do they get there? What are the reasons they give us to get there?